Welcome back guys. Hope you guys are having a great day as always. Today we're gonna to be talking about disjoint sets. So disjoint sets is a huge component in computer science. It's been used for cycle detection and uh, Chris Cole's algorithm. It has more applications and we'll actually be talking about that too. So what I'm gonna be covering for today is what are disjoint sets, the data structure itself, the union and find functions, and how you would detect cycles using um, disjoint sets. So what are disjoint sets? So in this case, I give an example here with a graph and you can see that I labeled two sets as S1 and S2. So S1 represents these three nodes and S2 represents these three nodes. And what you're gonna see is that they do not intersect. So if you take a look, you can see that the intersection is nothing. But for example, let's say that the set looked more like this. So now that they share the node five, this is no longer disjoint, so it does not work anymore. Another key thing to note is that each set has a representative. So in this node, it's gonna be here, and in this set, it's gonna be here. And the way you would find it is you would choose any random node, and you would traverse up its parents, so up these arrows, until you get to a node where it doesn't have a parent, or its parent is itself. So I didn't draw here, but the parent is basically itself if it doesn't have an arrow. And in this case, let's say we choose five, five goes to one, one's parent is not itself, it's zero. So then we'll go here and zero's parent is itself. So that's how you find the representative. So you might be wondering how we even choose these representatives. And we'll be talking about that with the data structure. So the data structure will kind of clear that up. So now we're gonna be talking about the data structure itself. And each node has two main properties. It has a rank and it has a parent. So the rank is a number of children plus one to include itself and the parent is just a parent of the node. So you can see in this example right here, this node itself, let's say that this is a set, its rank is one and its parent is one as well because it's just pointing at itself. If you look at two, two's rank is also one because it only has one node in it and its parent is two because its parent is itself. Now let's say we join these two. We'll talk about the implementation later, but as of right now, if we connected these two, so just like that, the new rank of one is gonna be two now because it has a child and itself. And the new parent of two is gonna be one because it just joined one. And now in this set, you can see that one is the representative because two points at one and one points at itself. So here you can see the data structure a little bit better. It's the array representation of disjoint sets, not the graphical, because I feel like the, the code is a lot simpler. So yeah, today we'll be using the array representation. So in the array representation, you number each node starting from zero. So if you have five nodes, you're gonna have zero, one, two, three, four. Then you're gonna have an array for rank and an array for parent. So each index, if this is what it looks like, so let's say at the start, so we have all five nodes starting from zero. Each of them has a parent of itself. And if you look at them, each set is just one value each. So that means the rank of every single value is gonna be one at start. That's why the rank starts off with one for every single value. The index, by the way, represents the actual value. So if you wanna find the parent of zero, you would look at the parent of the zero index. And in this case, it's zero, right? Uh, just like how the parent of the one is on the one index, which is one. And basically each one is the index of itself because that's what it starts off as, with the parent being itself. Now let's talk about the find function where you find the representative in a set. So this is the code itself. It's very simple, it's like three lines. And the logic is basically saying, given the node i, if i is not the parent of itself, go to i's parent. And then keep doing that until i becomes its own parent. So yeah, while i doesn't equal the parent i, i becomes the parent i. And then keeps going on in this loop until you reach the representative. And then you return this value. We can do this in this example right here where we want to find four. And this is the disjoint set that we have. So you start off with four. Four is not the parent of itself. The parent of four is three. So you, you traverse it three, and then you do the function again, which is gonna be from three, you see the parent of three. Three is not the parent of itself. Three is a child of two. So you go to two. Two has a parent of zero, which is not self. So you go to zero. Zero finally has a parent of zero, which is itself. So you stop at zero and that's how you find the representation. So find four is gonna be zero. Note that if we do find out any single one of these nodes in this graph, it's gonna point us to zero. So if we start at three, we're gonna traverse up to zero. If we start at zero, we're gonna be at zero. So every single find value in this disjoint set 
it's going to equal zero. That's important because we only want to have one representative in each set. So just so you get the idea of it, we're going to be using find here. And it does have union, but you don't have to worry about that. It's very simple. And I'll explain that after. All you have to know is that union just merges the two sets and makes it one. So find zero in this case, we find the representative of this set, which is zero. So that's how we get the value here is zero. If we look at one, one's representative is also one. So we do that. Now we union zero and one. It doesn't matter which one we make the representative. Let's just make zero the representative for now. So I'm gonna get rid of this arrow right here. I'm gonna make it point at zero. So now one's parent is zero and zero's parent is still itself. So if we do find one, we're gonna get the representative of this set right here. And that's gonna be zero. So we get zero right here. And with zero, zero's parent is itself. So we do zero right here for find zero. Now let's do union of zero and two. So when we do union, since this set is bigger than this set, we merge two with this bigger set. So the smaller set always joins the bigger set. So we're gonna get rid of this arrow right here and we're gonna make an arrow point up towards zero. Now if we do find two, we're gonna get zero and find zero is still gonna be itself, which is zero. For this last part, I need you to understand union. So we're gonna talk about union first. So union is very simple. It's just merging two sets. Let's union zero and one. Right now they're the same size, so it doesn't really matter who the representative is, but let's just choose zero to be the representative and join one to zero. So we'll get rid of this arrow and we'll put one connecting to zero, just like that. Now you're gonna see that the parent of one is no longer one. It's gonna be zero now. So I'm gonna change that here. And the rank of zero has just gone up by one because it has a child now. So rank of zero is gonna become two. Next, let's union zero and two. So zero one is bigger than two. So we're gonna merge that and we're gonna make two point to zero. When we do that, zero has two children plus itself. The rank goes up to three. And the parent of two is now zero. We replace two with zero. Now let's union three and two. So you'll see that in this set, two is not the representative, zero is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna merge three with zero. We need to always make sure that when we're unioning, we find the representatives first and then we union those. So yeah, you can tell this set is way bigger than this set. So we're gonna be joining three with zero. So we get rid of this arrow and we make 3.0 as well. Now we can update the parent of three to be zero. And now zero has three children plus itself. So the rank is gonna be four. So you'll see that with every union, one's rank will go up and one's parent will be replaced. So this is the function itself. Given nodes u and v, we first find the representations and we can do that using the find function that we implemented last time. So I'm gonna call u rep the find of u. So whatever this is, it'll give me the representation of that. And v rep is gonna find me the representation of the set v is in. So first we do a check if u rep is equal to v rep. So that basically means that u and v have the same representative. That means that they're both in the same set. We can't union two things that are in the same set, so we return false. Now let's check if the rank of u rep is greater than or equal to the rank of v rep, which basically means is the set of u rep bigger than the set of v rep? And if it is, we want to join v rep with u rep. So let's say it is, right? Now we want v rep to join u rep, just like that. And just like that, u rep's rank is gonna go up and v rep's parent is gonna be updated. The rank of u rep is gonna go up and it's gonna go up by the size of v rep. The reason we don't just do plus equals one is because v rep could represent multiple nodes in that set. So all of those nodes are now being added to u rep. So we have to make sure that the rank increases by the entire size of v rep. So because of that, rank represents the size. So we can just do rank of v rep right here. So the rank of u rep increases by the size of rank v rep. We also need to update the parent of v rep because now it's just gonna be pointing at u rep. In the else statement, u rep is gonna be joining v rep, so we're gonna be doing the other way around. So v rep is gonna go up by the size of u rep, and u rep's parent is now gonna be v rep. At the end of this, we're gonna return true because the union was successful and it did happen. That's pretty much it for union sets. It just has a rank and a parent and two functions, the so union function and the find function. We'll be talking about an application of disjoint sets now using union and find. And one of them is cycle detection. And cycle detection is very easy to do with union set 
So this is a graph that I'm using for this example. And these are the edges that you have. So 0, 1, 0, 2, 1, 3, and 2, 3. And there is a cycle here and we're going to be able to find it using disjoint sets. So the logic behind it can be written in two very simple steps. All you have to do is go through each edge and union until you can't anymore. What I mean by that is union until union eventually returns false. We saw over here that it returns false when two nodes are already in the same set. If you were able to union every single edge, that means that there was no cycle because every single union was successful. So first I make four disjoint sets for each of the nodes. I'm not gonna be writing out the rank or the parent because it's very easy to see just by looking at it. Like the parent is just what the arrow is pointing at and the rank is how many items are in that set. So we're gonna be unioning each of these one by one. So let's start off by unioning zero and one. Note that whenever two sets are the same size, we just choose an arbitrary representation. It doesn't really matter which one we choose. So we have that union and we're gonna union zero and two next. So for this union, we're gonna see that this set is bigger than two. So two is gonna be joining the bigger set. So because of that, I'm going to erase this error right here and make two point at zero. And just like that, we have a successful union. Next up, we're going to union one and three. We're going to see that three has a rank of one, but this entire set is the size of three. So we're going to see that this set is bigger than this set, but one is not the representative of this set. Zero is. So we're going to be unioning zero and three. Because of that, I'm going to erase the arrow here and I'm going to make it point at zero. Next up, we're going to try to union two and three. So first we find the representative of each one. The representative of two is going to go to zero. And the representative of three is going to go to zero as well. And since they're both zero, we know that they're both connecting to the same representative and they're all in the same set. And because of that, there's going to be a cycle if we connect that edge because there's two ways of connecting two and three now. And just like that, we've detected a cycle using disjoint sets. There are other applications of it, such as Crisco's algorithm, which I already do have a video on. So if you do want to check that out, I'll have that in the description. As always, I'll have all my code and references in the description below so you can check it out yourself. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something new. And if you do have any suggestions for upcoming videos, please let me know in the comment section.